What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys a very requested and anticipated video. This is a full comparison of the ZT Axon 7 and the OnePlus 3. Now I've been covering the Axon 7 a lot. I've got a lot of positive feedback from you guys. Everyone's really been enjoying the coverage. Usually I don't try to make videos on Saturdays because I try to take the day off, but I figured everyone's so excited about this phone, I had to go ahead and get this video out for you guys so I could do a full comparison. So what I'm going to do is just go through, compare everything I can about these two phones. If you guys have any lingering questions after I finish up, feel free to drop them in the comments below uh, this video. I'll try to keep it under 15 minutes, but it might be a little long because I am going to give you guys a full comparison. All right, so first let's start off with the specs uh, as I just sort of give you guys a nice little look at the two phones here. Of course, we have a pretty even spec sheet on these two. You've got the Snapdragon 820 on both phones. You've got 6 gigabytes of RAM on the OnePlus 3. 4 gigabytes of RAM on the ZT Axon 7. You do have a 1080p display here on the OnePlus 3, whereas on the ZT Axon 7, you do have that 2K display. Uh, so that's a difference. And of course, the 6 gigabytes of RAM versus 4 is a difference there as well. Uh, you can see here that on the ZT Axon 7, you've got front facing stereo speakers. On the OnePlus 3, you've got this bottom firing speaker. Uh, both of them have USB Type C, as you can see there on the bottom. They both feature a quick charge. Uh, you've got the dash charging, OnePlus 3's proprietary quick charging technology. Uh, you've got quick charge 3.0 here uh, on the ZT Axon 7. It does come with the quick charge 3.0 power brick in the box. Uh, both of them have pretty nice cameras here. Rear cameras on the back, we're talking 16 megapixels on the OnePlus 3. We got 20 megapixels on the ZT Axon 7. More megapixels doesn't always necessarily mean better. You've got an f1.8 aperture over here, f2.0 aperture on the OnePlus 3. So I'll talk about the camera in depth towards the, well, I don't know, towards the middle of the end of the video. That is a big category a lot of people are interested in. Um, otherwise, both of them have really nice front-facing cameras. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. They both got fingerprint scanners. Slight differences, you've got a fingerprint scanner here on the front of the OnePlus 3, as you can see. On the ZT Axon 7, you got your fingerprint scanner on the back. So that may be something that you're interested in. If you're someone who prefers a fingerprint scanner on the front or the back, that might be a reason to get this one of these phones over the other. Another big difference, the OnePlus 3 does not have the expandable memory. So you can't put an SD card into this phone. This one you can. So you've got the dual SIM capability on the ZT Axon 7, but you've also got the ability to stick a SIM card right there in that slot on the side. So that's a big deal to a lot of people. If you like media, you'll be able to put up to 256 gigabyte uh, SD card into this phone. So overall, some really nice features on both of the phones. Um, the spec sheet looks pretty even on paper. The Axon Pro in terms of its, uh, I mean, sorry, not the Axon Pro, talking about last year's phone. The Axon 7 in terms of its standout features, really these front facing speakers, the Hi-Fi audio DAC that it has in it. Um, the OnePlus 3, if you think about its outstanding features, I don't know if there are really any amazing hardware features that stick out. This notification slider is one thing that I like on the OnePlus 3 that's not really featured on any other Android phones. So that's something to think about. Uh, but overall, they're very, very similar on the spec sheet, so the specs don't always tell the whole story. Uh, the next thing is, of course, the build. We've got two phones that have got aluminum unibody overall. I did a size comparison when I did the Axon 7 unboxing. The OnePlus 3 is a little bit taller. The phones are pretty similar in terms of their overall thickness. The OnePlus 3 is a little bit wider. Um, but because the Axon has this subtle curve to the back, as you guys can see right there, and the OnePlus 3 is more of a boxy phone, it's like a rectangular slate, the Axon 7 is actually easier to hold in the hand. So I'd say in terms of the beauty of the two phones, the build quality of the two phones, they both have very similar build quality. They're both beautiful builds. I like to hold both of the phones. I'm partial to aluminum builds myself. Um, but in terms of which one feels better in the hand, I got to go with the Axon 7. Uh, it's a little more slippery than the, the OnePlus 3, of course, but um, that also comes with a price. The OnePlus 3, it's a little harder to use one-handed if you have small hands. I don't have small hands, so for me, it's not really a huge deal, but if you do have smaller hands and you want that 5.5-inch screen, the ZT Axon 7 might be the way to go. Uh, the next thing to talk about is the display. So I mentioned that you've got the 1080p display here on the OnePlus 3, whereas you've got the 2K display on the Axon 7. Now the Axon 7, because of that display, uh, it does get more detail. And also, in comparing these outside, the viewing angles are better on the ZT Axon 7. You can see here in the light, even if you tilt it, a little bit better viewing angles here on the Axon 7 than on the OnePlus 3. 
just sort of tilting them at various angles to read them. So, you know, the viewing angles refers to if you have it at various angles, are you gonna be able to read this in direct sunlight? And here in Phoenix, that's very important. I found the Axon 7 to be a bit brighter uh, and also, of course, has more detail because of the 2K screen. Not to say the OnePlus 3 is a slouch. It has good brightness and has really nice colors, in my opinion, anyway, for a 1080p screen. But the screen's a little more vibrant, better viewing angles, and, of course, more detail on the Axon 7. So if you have to have that 2K screen, that might be a reason to go with the Axon 7. Uh, the next thing to talk about with these two phones is the audio. That's another place where the Axon 7 clearly wins. You've got these front-facing stereo speakers, again, versus this bottom-firing speaker here. Obviously, front-facing speakers are always better, but these aren't just any front-facing speakers on the Axon 7. These are very, very impressive front-facing speakers. I did a comparison of these to the Nexus 6P. I even did a comparison of these to the Moto Z with the JBL Sound Mod on there last night. And they're very, very close in uh, not only sound loudness, but also in the clarity of the sound that you get. I would say these are great speakers, especially for the price tag, $399. But in addition to that, if you want to plug some headphones in here, you got your headphone port on the bottom, which this is just a personal opinion. I prefer my headphone port on the bottom, which is on the OnePlus 3. You have it over here on the top on the ZT Axon 7, as you guys can see. But if you plug headphones in here, you also get much better sound out of the ZT Axon 7. It's got the Hi-Fi audio DAC, so you're gonna get better quality there as well. Someone asked me about Dolby Atmos. That's controlled within the quick settings there. You see you can turn that on and off. So the Dolby Atmos is just another great feature that adds to the overall audio quality on the ZT Axon 7. The next thing I wanna talk about is the software. So you guys know software is a big deal to me. Uh, it's actually one of the more important things to me. This is the place where I think the OnePlus 3 really shines in terms of this overall competition. I mentioned a few of the software issues I had with the ZT Axon 7. Nothing too serious, but I really love Oxygen OS. You guys can see I'm running the dark theme on the OnePlus 3. You've got just enough customization options to make it really, really nice on the OnePlus 3, but also a very stock feel. A few things that I don't like about the Axon 7 software. I already mentioned you've got this little notification bell. It's probably not gonna pop up now because I don't have any notifications. You can't see your lock screen notifications unless you tap that. That's a little annoying. On the OnePlus 3, you don't have anything like that. There are no annoying modifications. All the customizations they made, I think really made sense and add to the experience. Also on the OnePlus 3, you have the option to use software buttons or use, on, or use software buttons which are on screen or use capacitive buttons. Here, you only have the option to use capacitive buttons and you can change the handedness. You can do all of this cool stuff on the OnePlus 3, turn the backlight on or off. You don't even have a backlight on the capacitive keys down here, which is another complaint I have with the ZT Axon 7. So I think the customization is better on the OnePlus 3. Both of them are very smooth experiences. Uh, neither of them are too far away from stock. They're not like TouchWiz or LG's UI or anything like that. But I think you do get the better experience on the OnePlus 3. In addition to the stock software being better on the OnePlus 3, in my opinion, you also have an unlockable bootloader. You can root the phone. There's a lot of developer support for this phone out there already. The ZT Axon 7, as I mentioned in my Q&A, this thing does not have an unlockable bootloader yet. ZT says they're working on it, but we don't know when that's going to happen. And we also don't even know how much support there's going to be for the phone once that does occur. So for now, in terms of software, I think the OnePlus 3 is taking the win when it comes to that. Uh, the next thing, of course, to talk about is the performance. I sort of briefly touched on that. The main difference between the two phones in the performance category, you got the six gigabytes of RAM versus the four gigabytes of RAM. Now, is that a huge deal? Um, well, if you're multitasking, as you guys can see, I keep open like a million apps all the time. If you're multitasking, that's kind of a big deal if you run a lot of big apps. So if you're doing just, you know, everyday stuff, you know, like wallpaper apps, or you're doing something like, I don't know, like Flickster, or you're just doing your calendar or something like that, it's not a big deal how many apps you can store in memory. But if you're playing a lot of big games like Pokemon Go um, or some other big games like Asphalt, some of these racing games, it might be important how many apps you can keep in memory, especially games like Pokemon Go, because sometimes you have to close them out and reload. Now, of course, holding all of these apps in memory, you're not going to hold hope to hold like 40 or 50 apps. Some of the apps are going to get reloaded, especially if you don't use them for a long period of time. But the OnePlus 3 is better at loading uh, large apps over a short period of time. So if you're multitasking with games like Pokemon Go uh, or other large apps and you're sort of doing a whole bunch of things at once, the OnePlus 3 is better with that extra two gigabytes of RAM. It could still improve on RAM management, but it's a little bit better than the four gigabytes on the Axon 7. Now, 
in terms of everyday navigation, like I said, navigating the UI, I've hardly had any lag at all. The OnePlus 3 does feel a little bit faster, but I think that's because the animations are a little faster. There's a little bit longer animation time on the Axon 7. You can, of course, change the animations or turn them off in developer settings, and both of these phones are going to be perfectly fine. Uh, in terms of actual performance, loading game times, things like that, the OnePlus 3 does have a bit better benchmarking scores, but that's a function of a lot of things. One, it's not driving as more power, this, this powerful display over here, and also some optimizations in the software. So I would say yes, if you're looking for the best gaming performance, probably the OnePlus 3, but you are gonna be gaming on that 1080p screen versus 2K. So you know maybe that matters to you, maybe it doesn't, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, the next big thing, of course, is battery life. People always wanna know about battery life. That's a very, very important thing when you're talking about two phones. If we go in here and take a look, I already showed you guys one thing that I don't like about the ZT Axon 7. It does not show you your, your on-screen time when it comes to battery usage. So you can go in here, you can check on your used battery power. It sort of shows you the little graph, but it doesn't show you your total on-screen time. Whereas if you go in here on the OnePlus 3, you can actually see you know, your standby time, your screen time. I haven't been using it much because I just booted it up and I let it sort of sit overnight because I was using the Axon 7 and the Moto Z. But in terms of overall battery life, I've only had four cycles on the Axon 7. I've been getting about four hours screen on time, and that's about what I get on the OnePlus 3, maybe a little less. So I might put the Axon 7 ahead in terms of battery life. I probably get about half an hour longer. Now, as I always say in my battery life comments, I have like three Bluetooth devices, my Android Wear device, um, Bluetooth speaker at the office, and my LG Tone Infinim headset paired to any phone that's my daily driver. So my battery life is usually gonna be less than some other people. So for me, four hours on the Axon 7 is pretty good. My top of the line phones, like the S7 Edge, and even the Moto Z Force Droid, which I ran yesterday, I get about five hours screen on time. So five hours, I'd say it's very good. Four hours is good. The three and a half I get on the OnePlus 3 is a little behind uh, where I'd like it to be. So I think the Axon 7 definitely takes it in the battery life category. Uh, the next question, of course, is the camera. So both of these guys have pretty good cameras on them. Uh, in my opinion, I'll say from the beginning, a lot of people wanted me to compare it to the S7 Edge. I may do that, but these, these don't come close to the S7 Edge in low light, in my opinion. You've got some nice options on both. So if you go into the settings here, you can change quite a few things. The OnePlus 3, I think, has the better interface overall. Here, the Axon 7 sort of got a really crowded interface. You can see at the bottom, you've got the video manual mode and a few other options here if you tap on there. You've got the super night mode, which gives you a little more bright at night. Panorama, slow motion, multi-exposure, sports, magic exposure, and time lapse. I haven't tried those bottom two options yet. The OnePlus 3's interface is a little more simple. You don't have quite as many crazy options. Uh, just a very simple interface to navigate. You've got HDR, of course, on both of these. Uh, I took some photos with both of them, uh, both on auto and on manual. Did a little comparison. I posted a picture on Twitter that I think is pretty representative of the comparison uh, before this video. And that's a picture I took of my car. I'll go ahead and show it to you guys. Of course, it's hard to see here on the video itself which one's better because of the screen brightness. But if you go check out the picture on Twitter, uh, this is the picture I took you know, from the same spot on the OnePlus 3 versus the Axon 7. The Axon 7 is not as bright. It's also got a bit of a yellowish tint to it. So even in daylight photos, the Axon 7 sometimes has a little bit of an issue with exposure, either underexposure or overexposure if you're shooting indoors with a bright incandescent light, in my opinion. I took some pictures in the billiard hall the other night. Those pictures are also on my Twitter and Instagram if you guys want to check them out. And the ZT Axon 7 took the red three ball, the billiard ball, and it sort of looked pink when you shot it on auto mode. I did dial it back on manual and I got a decent shot. But, you know, not everybody's going to shoot in manual mode. Uh, if you do shoot in manual mode, both of the cameras have some pretty nice settings. So you can get, you know, shutter speed and all these various things and fine tune them in the manual mode on the ZT Axon 7, which is, of course, a nice thing to have. And, you know, a lot of people who are photography people might enjoy having that. The OnePlus 3 has a much simpler interface. You've got a lot more options on the Axon 7. So if you're into all those photography options, then that's going to be great. I haven't had a chance to test the rear video extensively on the Axon 7. I will say that it's not very stable. I shot one test video. It's not stable if you're freehanding it, but that's expected. Same thing on the OnePlus 3. Both of the front-facing cameras shoot excellent video as well as excellent photos. So if you're into taking selfies, both of these give you great value for the $399 price point. Uh, I would say they're even close to the front-facing camera 
on the S7 Edge um, overall in terms of quality. As long as you're not shooting in super dark light again, the S7 Edge performs better all around in low light situations, both at night and indoors. All right, so I think that's most of what I wanted to say about comparing the two phones. Uh, just in terms of the bottom line, if I had to sum it up here for you guys, I would say the ZT Axon 7 is probably the better overall hardware here. It's got the overall better screen, it's got better speakers, better audio output, um, everywhere except for the camera. The OnePlus 3 has the better camera, in my opinion. You can look at the photos and decide for yourself. I'll still try to do a single video on camera comparison. But I think the Axon 7's got the better hardware in a lot of areas. But the OnePlus 3 really shines when it comes to multitasking performance. It has the better software, uh, and that's really important to me. I really care about the software, the camera, and the multitasking. Uh, the Axon 7 wins on battery life, screen, the speakers, and the sound quality for headphones with that Hi-Fi audio DAC. Uh, fingerprint scanner quality, I know people are going to ask about that. The one on the Axon 7 is actually a little temperamental. I find that it doesn't open as often as I might like. It's not as fast as the one on the Nexus 6P, which is sort of my standard for a rear fingerprint scanner. I think the OnePlus 3 does have a bit faster fingerprint scanner as well. So otherwise, you know, a lot of things to consider, the same price. If you need expandable storage, if you need that great audio, might go with the Axon 7. If you're more into rooting your phone, customizing it, and you want that better camera, you might want to go with the OnePlus 3. OnePlus has also shown that they are really supporting this phone, pushing out a lot of updates to address any concerns that people have had. All right, guys, so that's my full comparison of these two phones. If there's anything else you guys want to know, I do want to make this video 30 minutes so I you know, covered the important points that I think really matter to people. Drop me a comment below. I'll be happy to answer it. You can also find me at dopetechdaily.com, Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus, the links in the description. Please like and subscribe if you guys enjoy my coverage of the Axon 7 and you can see all my future content here on the channel. I really appreciate you guys checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.